Thank you. We love you. We praise you. And again, it is an honor to be here, Georgia Hills. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah. I want to give honor to Pastor Harris. Amen. 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 Serious business, amen. Yes. 
Serving God, amen, has a serious responsibility. And God has given men and women to love and shepherd his people, but it's not an easy job. How many, how many of you have found out, amen, you don't even have to be a pastor or a minister, just being a Christian, you found out it's not easy, amen. I heard you, amen, I know when you got saved, you figured that I gave my life to the Lord and now God is going to bless me and he's going to open doors for me and he's going to make my way smooth, but you found out, amen, that there is a different story in following the Lord, amen. Jesus said himself, in this world, ye shall have tribulation, amen, but be of good cheer, for I have what? overcome the world. If there's something that I believe is missing in the church of 2016, it is this. It is a false belief that when we come to the Lord, we're not going to have any troubles. We have a candy gospel where we want everything that sounds good, feels good, tastes good. But can I tell you, amen, if you're really going to be a solid Christian, if you're going to be a solid child of God, you got to learn how to suffer. Amen. you got to learn how to endure. you got to learn how to fight through some things that are coming against you. Somebody say, learn how to fight. Learn how to fight. Yeah, learn how to fight. Have you discovered that you're in a fight? Have you discovered, amen, that this fight is not easy? That's why Paul was able to say, I have taught a good fight. I have kept the faith, amen. I have finished my court. And that should be our goal. That once we follow the Lord, as we are being disciples of Christ, whatever comes our way, we got to be strengthened, we have to be anointed, and we have to be filled with the power of God to fight a good fight. Tell your neighbor, fight a good fight. Uh, yeah, I, I, no, I see some of y'all, y'all already thrown in the towel. Those little children, y'all bless my heart, amen, when they did the dance, amen. And they had the part where they pulled out the white handkerchief. Y'all know what the white handkerchief means. The white handkerchief means when you throw it in, I give up, amen. I have discovered, amen, and maybe some of you, you have discovered, amen. So many Christians in 2016 are throwing in the towel. They're giving up. They stop coming to church, amen. They stop coming to Bible study. They stop coming to Sunday school. They stop coming to prayer meeting. And you wonder what is really going on. Oh. When you ask some of them, are you okay? What's going on? Well, uh, pastor and preacher, I'm going through some things. Yes. In my life. And can I say you sometimes, you know, Christians, we can be experts at spiritualizing disobedience. <laughs> <laughs> can I tell you uh, how we do it, amen? Uh, uh, we're going through some things. We're saying, uh, God is taking me through a shift in my life. Y'all ain't good. God is taking me in a different Direction. Oh, yes, Have y'all heard some of those things? Yes, uh, can I tell you, amen, that when you watch what the shift is, you never see the shift <laughs> in their life. You never see uh, what the new direction in their life that's taken hold because really what it is, amen, <coughs> is that they become angry with God or maybe angry with the leader, amen, and they don't want to follow. But I thank God, amen, as you follow God, as you follow Christ, God said there are going to be some times in your life you don't understand what's going on. But you got to be faithful and you got to keep walking and talking with God. Do I have a witness in this house? Amen. Amen. God demands obedience regardless of our circumstances. Amen. That's why Jesus was able to say, he said, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. What kind of cup was he talking about? He was talking about a cup of bitterness. A cup of suffering, the cup of crucifixion. In his natural self, he said, Let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless. Do I have any more nevertheless saints in the house? You gotta have a nevertheless spirit in you. Amen. I was listening to Pastor Thomas' uh, testimony how she lost her husband and she lost a lot of material things in her life. And the devil tried to attack her mind. Amen. And I want you to know as a Christian, as a saint, the devil will attack your mind. He'll attack your spirit. He'll attack your loved one. He'll attack everything that's dear to you. And it's at that time you got to have a nevertheless spirit. God, take my family. God, take my job. God, take my wealth. But you're not going to take my praise. You're not going to take my glory. You're not going to take my worship. Because he's done too much.
too much. That's right. Yeah. 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 You've done too much. That's right. uh, hey, hey, is God still doing great things in your life? Yes, he is. Is God still doing wonderful things in your life? Yes, he is. I got a reason to praise him. Yes, I got a right to praise him. And there is no other option. Amen. Amen. Even if I don't pay the bill tomorrow, God is still good. Amen. Help me, y'all. Even if they would repossess the car, God is still good. Amen. And I've learned in my life that sometimes God allows you to go through some tough times to really see where your praise is. Yes. Yes. Notice in this text, amen, in this text, uh, there are three people who come to Jesus and they are motivated to follow him. Uh, and many of you, you are motivated to follow God because yeah. you've heard the word of God and it sounds good, amen. And you've seen other uh, people of God who've been blessed and you're motivated to follow God, but here were some issues uh, that they had with following God. Uh, the first one, Jesus said, foxes have homes and birds have nests. But the Son of Man had no place to lay his head. What was Jesus saying? Jesus was saying, even though I hear what you're saying, you want to follow me, but are you willing to follow me when the things don't come through that you want them to come through? Amen. If you don't get the job, if you don't get the promotion, if you don't, don't get the raise, will you still follow me? I'm talking to some saints, but God is trying to push us. Amen. He's trying to propel us to a place where we honor him and we worship him no matter what the outside circumstances. All right. All right. So the first part of you said, uh, even though the circumstances might not be favorable, are you still going to follow me? Uh, can I ask you, amen, some of you started uh, 05 for the Lord five years ago. Some of you started 05 in the ministry 10 years ago. But circumstances took a turn. All right. Can I tell you, circumstances will take a turn in your life. I don't care how anointed, I don't care how filled with the Holy Ghost you are, circumstances will take a turn in your life. And when circumstances take a turn in your life, will you still be faithful unto God? Well, the second one, a person came up and he said, uh, uh, Jesus, I want to follow you, but uh, I, I got to go bury my dad. Uh, Jesus said something to me that's kind of puzzling and maybe insensitive to some of us. And he said, let the dead bury their dead. But come and preach the gospel. Uh, what has always, always troubled me about that text is that here is a man who's going through some grief. Yeah. And anybody who's ever gone through grief, yeah. you understand the pain that's attached to grief. Yeah. Here is a man that's going through grief, yet he wants to follow God, and Jesus tells him, let the dead <coughs> bury their dead. Come and follow me. What that lets me know is when you go through circumstances in your life where you are in pain, yeah. even in your pain, still be willing to put God first. Yeah. Come on, please. The truth be told, all of us at some point in our life, we've gone through some pain. Yeah. Yeah. We suffered the cross. But I'm glad, amen, that when I came over to church, there was a song that said, Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there is a cross for everyone. And there is a cross for you and me. And I like, even with the cross, if you keep listening to the gospel song, Dickie Wilder sang this song, No Cross, No Cross. <laughs> We want the crown, but we don't want the cross. We want the paycheck, but we don't want to go to work. We want the promotion, but we don't want to do the extra work to get the promotion. I'm not talking to anybody here. But God's truth never changes, amen. And if we're going to go through the cross, God promises us a crown, a reward, amen. And I believe there's some still some saints here today that God has rewarded you because you were willing to suffer your cross. 
So stop cursing the cross. Ooh. That's right. Stop cursing the cross. That's right. Celebrate the cross. That's right. Celebrate the cross. That's right. Because it's in the cross where you will receive your crown. Yes. I heard the uh, pastor say, hey man, uh, you cannot have a testimony unless you go through something. Amen. You can't say God gave me a job if you never lost your job. You can never say God is a healer if you've never been sick. You can never say God is a provider. He will supply my every need according to his riches and glory if you've never been broke. But I'm talking to some broke folk right now. I'm talking to some folk who really know that's been sick. Won't God do it? Amen. Did God want you a healing in your life? Did he supply your need according to his riches and glory? Somebody say give glory, glory to God. Thank God. He's a provider. Thank God. He's a promise keeper. Thank God. He's a promise maker. Thank God. He will. He will. He will supply your every need. But then there is the last one. And it says, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me first go bid them farewell. Which will happen now. Uh, this is going to be tough. Uh, because material convenience, mm -hmm. some of us can make that decision. Yeah, yeah. It's tough, but some of us can make that decision. Pain, mm -hmm. that's a little tough, huh? mm -hmm. but some of us can make that decision. Yeah, yeah. What y'all don't see in this text is here, this person is still tied to their family. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough decision. Because how many of you mothers are willing to follow God if God tells you you need to cut off your child. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, keep quiet. All right. All right. <laughs> I, I, I gave you this uh, illustration. Y'all remember the Baltimore Rides uh, uh, where Freddie Gray was keeping and then the Baltimore Rides, amen, uh, it, they were going crazy, amen. They were tearing up buildings, they were vandalizing, they were beating cars, and there was this mother, this mother who was at home on TV, she was watching TV, and she saw a young man who was her son, amen, in the midst of that foolishness, in the midst of that mess. But here was a mother who was willing, amen, not to just sit back and say, oh, Lord, there go my child. What is wrong with him? I taught him better. No, she didn't stay there. She got up off her behind. Somebody said, you know, off her behind, amen. She got up off her behind. She went down in the midst of the chaos, found her son, grabbed her son, and brought her son out of that mess because she said, I have sacrificed too much for you. I love you too much to let you throw your life away. Amen. She was willing, amen, to be at odds with her son in order to save his soul. Family attachments. Family loyalty. Can I let you know that if you're going to follow Christ, you got to be willing to separate yourself from your family sometimes? Y'all don't want to talk to me right now, amen. But sometimes, amen, you got to tell mama, no, that's not what God said. Sometimes you got to tell grandmama, no, that's not what God said. Sometimes you got to tell your own children, you can't do this because the word of God said. You can't do it. But at the church today, we are too attached to our children. Family yes. We want to be our children's friends. Yes. Yes. Am I talking to anybody in here? Yes. Uh, you don't want to upset your child. Because you don't want your child to be mad at you. Thank you, sister. The devil is a lie. God never asked for parents to be their children's friend. What he did ask for parents to do is to be their teacher. Train up a child. That's teaching. Train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they shall not depart from it. Many, one of the reasons why we got our children, our youth just running all over the place is because they haven't been taught. Yeah. Come on, church. Yeah. Can I just be real with you? Yeah. Being a police officer for 
20 years. And I thank God, amen, that he led me in that direction. It wasn't something I wanted to do. It wasn't something I anticipated. But when you are following God, God will lead you down some paths you never thought right. you were going. I didn't understand it at first, but as it, well, after I got into it, I understood completely why God placed me in that position. One of the things that I'm learning about our youth in 2016, yes, they're engaged, yes, they're game banging, yes, they're shooting, yes, they're sagging, yes, they're doing all the things that we don't like. But guess what, church? When you sit down and take some time to talk to them, they don't want to talk to me now. Yeah. Yeah. When you sit down, and take the time to talk to them rather than judge them, yeah. you will find out, amen, that there's a daddy, yeah. amen, a stepdaddy, mm. amen, that is uh, molesting. Mm. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Molesting the daughter, amen. Yeah. You will find out some of these boys are angry, amen, not necessarily at life, but they're angry at that man who is beating up his mama. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Yeah. There's a lot going on in homes that's causing our children, amen, to be angry and they're acting out and that's where we as the church, we should step in and show them some love. Amen. Show them some tough love. Amen. But show them love. And part of showing tough love is telling the truth. Amen. 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 Speak. I don't care if you get mad at me. I'm going to tell you the truth. And the truth will sit. Amen. See, we've gotten away from that anyway. But God's word is still the same. Church. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God's word. Someone say God's word. Heaven and earth shall pass away. God said, My word shall stand forever. So here's my question to the church. If we're going to follow Christ, when Christ says, If any man will follow me, and put his hand on the plow. He can't look back. He got to keep moving forward. Tell your neighbor, press on. Press on. Press on. Press on. Preach on. Preach the word in season. Out of season. Amen. When they want to hear it, and when they don't want to hear it. Because there's a time that's already here. They will not endure sound doctrine. Translation, they don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear something that's going to make them jump and shout and dance and feel good. But can I tell you, that's a lie from the enemy. You better listen to the word of God. Somebody say the word. The word. The word still saves. The word still delivers. The word still protects. The word still heals. How many of you know the word is the word? The word is still good. Yes. And when we die and leave here, the word still will. Yes. Be good. Yes. Because his word yes. is sharper yes. than in a two-edged sword. Yes. And it can divide mm -hmm. to the marrow and the bone yes. to reveal and expose what our true motives are. Yes. Come on, now maybe that's why we don't want to hear the word. Because yes. uh, when, when somebody's not preaching the word, then we can hide. We, we can play around. Uh, we, we, we can put on our costumes. But when you hear the truth and when you hear the word of God, even if you don't like it, it will convict your heart. Amen. 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 It'll convict you. And if you allow it, it will change your life. <laughs> be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? In the word. in the word. Preacher, bishop, thank you for staying true to the word. Lady Becker, thank you for staying true to the word. My colleagues in the ministry up here, thank you for staying true to the word. And can I just exhort the church, amen, in these last and evil days, you better make sure you find yourself in the book, amen. Somebody say in the book. Uh, you got to stay in the book. Yeah. You got to believe the book. Yeah. You got to claim the book. Yeah. You got to carry the book in your heart. Yeah. You got to hold on to the book. Do I have any believers that say, I got to stay in the book? Stay in the book. Not Facebook. 
right. I'm going to take my seat. What can I say this about Facebook? But again, this is from a police officer perspective. Uh, do y'all not know that every time you post on Facebook, uh, even if you try to delete it, we can get a warrant to come get it. So it's amazing, man. This is to the young people, and this is for free. Uh, be selective about what you post on Facebook. Not necessarily just for the police, but there are some predators on the internet. There are some people who are pretending to be a man and they are a woman, or they're pretending to be a woman and they're a man. And they want to befriend you, amen, and find out about your life and get in your life. And that's one of the ways the enemy is trying to take our young people out. I have watched Facebook, and I don't have a Facebook account, but I've watched some people on Facebook, and they put their entire life. Come on, y'all. That's the equivalent. Don't take my seat. That's the equivalent of opening up your house. Your most precious possession is probably your home. That's sacred, right? Can't nobody just come up in your house, right? You protect your house. But the way some people operate on Facebook and put everything out there, it's almost like opening the back door and the front door of your house and, and hoping somebody doesn't come in. Say it. I'm not saying Facebook is bad. Facebook has value. But here's my question. The amount of time you spend on Facebook compared to how much time you spend it in this book. I guarantee you, if you take a fraction of the time you spend on Facebook and get in this book, I believe your life will change. I have a witness in there. I believe some things will be broken in your life. I believe you'll see transformation in your life. It's a matter of where we spend our time. And that's why Jesus said, if any man put his hand to the plow and looks back, he's not fit for the kingdom of God. What are you looking back at? What's holding you back? What's pulling you back? How are you slipping back? Why are you sitting back? Right. Tell you that it's time to take back to take our joy. Back. It's time to take back our peace. Yeah. It's time to take back yeah. the truth of the word of God. It's time to take back our families. Y'all heard what the word of God said when I praise dancing with dancing? You can't have my family. Yeah. <laughs> you can't have my breakthrough. Yeah. You can't have my increase. You can't, you can't, you can't have my, I plead the blood of Jesus. Do I have to say it here? You still plead the blood of Jesus. And you have to have a mentality that tell me, I'm not going to let you take out my family. I'm not going to let you take my health. I'm not going to let you take my praise. I'm not going to let you take my worship because I love God too much and he's not too much for me. He's done too much for me. So Jesus, if you had that encounter with you and me, this is what he's saying to the saints. Once you put your hand to the plow, the plow of the gospel, the plow of serving God, the plow of serving God's people, once you put your hand to the plow, If you keep looking back, <coughs> Jesus says, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. That's some tough stuff, church. But we live in the day where people got their hands on the ground.
press it forward. Yes. Keep looking forward. Yes. Keep preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. Keep praying. Yes. Keep singing. Keep believing. Yes. Keep trusting. Yes. And I know it sounds like a Christian cliche, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. If you keep with God, Amen. 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 Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor labor. Your preaching. Your pastoring. Your praising. Your ministry is not in let us pray, church. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, yes. give us a spirit to match the times. Mm -hmm. Father, there are so many who are looking back, Jesus. falling back, yes. slipping back. Mm -hmm. But God, I pray in the name of Jesus, <laughs> I pray that they will come back. Yes. They will come back running to you. I pray, oh God, that they will find your wonderful grace, just like the prodigal son. Yeah. When the prodigal son came running to his father, his father met him with open arms and a kiss and threw a party for him. Yeah. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that somebody returns to you and they will find that same reception by the grace of God. Thank you right now that somebody's coming back to you. Thank you for that daughter. Thank you for that son. Thank you for that mother. Thank you for that father that's coming back to you. Thank you for that preacher. Thank you for that prophet. Thank you for that minister that's coming back to you. Thank you for that choir member. Thank you for that usher. Thank you just for that lay person who's coming back to you. We claim it, we declare it by the authority of your word. And we thank you for breaking the chain. Break chains now in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing destroy every yoke of bondage. And God, we declare liberty and freedom in the lives of your believers. Who have fallen back, who have slipped back. Thank you for breaking the back. In the name of Jesus. We worship you. We praise you. Thank you for Bishop Beckford and Lady Beckford. Thank you, God, for their wonderful example. Thank you, God, that they have not been looking back. When they put their hand on the plow, they've been moving forward for 60 years. Thank you for that. And we ask, oh God, that you would bless and reward their faithfulness. In the name of Jesus, because you said we want to hear, oh God, well done. Well done, thy good and faithful service. They have been faithful service. Thank you for the inspiration that they are to me and so many others. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the saints of God said, Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Give God some glory. Give